to do something special this morning since it is the Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to ask Brother Jimmy to come and he's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. And I ask all of you to stand and then after we do that we're going to sing America the Beautiful. And that would be on page 531. But if you would, uh, to honor our flag, if you would, Jimmy, stand right there and you're good right there if you want to lead us. Right there is good. Okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. And you lead us in the flag. You ready? Yeah. Everybody ready? I pledge allegiance to this flag of the United States of America, and, 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 and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice just for all. Amen. Amen. Now remain standing and turn to page 531. America the Beautiful. We're going to sing the first, third, and last verse. Thank you, Jimmy. thanks for all those who've sacrificed for our freedom and as you feel led. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come this morning thank you for the God that loves us enough and gave us a country, Lord, that we've been in for, first in and foremost in honor and worshiping and glorified him in our country and in our uh, way of living. And Lord, we pray that you can uh, give it back to us, Lord, and it help us to redeem the country again and, and help us to shine forth in the world the, the God that we love and serve. And Lord, we praise you for all that you do and all that you are, Lord, uh, how that you uh, help the people in the wartime, Lord, the soldiers and the police and all that goes forth, Lord, to, to keep us and help us to stay free. And Lord, we do pray and ask you to bless this nation Bless each and every soldier that has fought in the wars and has been uh, servicemen, Lord, to, to keep us free. Lord, we do pray that you God, be honored and glorified in this today that we bring forth uh, your songs and, and our heart is turned toward you to glorify you and, 
and to worship and honor and give you the glory that we should. And we ask you, Lord, to be with those that are sick, that you touch and heal and bless according to your will. Be with those that are lost, Lord, show them the way. Lord, show them Jesus and, and uh, change their heart that they would see the truth. And all of it, Lord, that it's not a fiction. It's not a, a, a fairy tale, that it is the truth. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we do put you and ask you to, to continue to put the men in office, Lord, that would uh, help to control this uh, nation, uh, to lead it and guide it under your direction, Lord, and your, your uh, way of uh, guiding us by uh, lifting up the hearts of the kings and Lord, giving them the ideas and the thoughts that they lead and guide and direct in these days. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let me share a few things with you today and uh, trust that uh, you'll have a wonderful weekend. Memorial Day is not about celebrating. It's about remembering those who sacrificed their lives for our nation's freedom and for those families who sacrificed loved ones. So I know many people will be doing the celebrating and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them doing that, but we really need to remember uh, on Memorial Day, this is a day that's been set aside as a somber time and many people will be mourning the loss of a loved one. So keep that in mind uh, as you enter into your weekend, and I pray that you'll be safe if you're traveling, and that uh, you'll just enjoy this time and remember your nation and those in uh, military and in leadership. Now, as far as a special prayer request, this past week we had a special donation from friends of our church, and it says thank you. Of course, we send cards and letters, so this person said, thank you for your kind words, the card, and of course, the prayer. We appreciate the way you keep us in your thoughts. And on behalf of our family, we would like to honor the Cufford family uh, with uh, this donation because they have proved to be such a great witness to them and a support to that family. So. We've given that uh, donation to Ron, and we really appreciate that. God has a way that Ron is providing when we have a need and from ways and places that we really aren't even aware of are coming in. So thank you to that family for that donation. Now, last week was Ron's 16th birthday. Oh, I mean, not 16th. It was on May the 16th. You'll have to tell us when it was. So we sang happy birthday, but this past week was his and Ron's anniversary. So we're thankful to have them in the church. You want to help me sing a little happy anniversary to these two? All right, let's do that. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Let's give them a round of applause. I sure hope people are able to pick this up because it said that our internet was having a slow uh, uh, reaction this morning. So if you're listening on Facebook or uh, later on the, uh, through the web, we pray that this will come out. But I asked uh, Ron, I was talking to him the other day and I, about how his anniversary went. And Ron said, well, I got up and uh, told Donna, I said, Donna, this is our anniversary. And what I expect you to do is make me a full breakfast, give me a complete back rub for as long as I want it, and give me complete and full access to the TV so I can watch all my favorite shows. I asked Ron, I said, well, what did she say? And she got extremely angry, Ron said, and said some rather hateful things. So I got up and went into the bedroom. Well, what did she do, I asked him. Well, she, just a few moments, she came crawling to me on her hands and knees. 
I said, really, what did she say? She said, come out from under that bed, you coward. Let's straighten this out. That didn't really happen, did it? Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, let me go ahead into another uh, time of prayer real quickly. We want to remember a special missionary couple that was killed in Haiti along with some other parts of their ministry there. And this is the missionary couple, David and Natalie. Uh, and we've been praying for Haiti and the unrest there. So they were murdered, young couple. So we're praying for that family and the family members in the ministry there. We never know when something like that's going to happen. And it really doesn't have to happen in Haiti anymore, does it? So let's remember that family. We're praying for Wayne and uh, Lester Lawson, Carol Masters, Joan Handy, Brenda and Larry Shore. We're praying for Pastor Ayers, wife Minnie, Rocky Golden, David and Nancy Drake, Janet Cook, Dean Phillips, Jimmy's brother Richard and Ray Bolden and his niece Sherry. Pray for James Driver, his friend, for Patty's uh, sister-in-law, Emma. And some special needs we have here for our neighborhood. We're praying for our uh, neighbors, Tama and Bruce, Kevin and his family, Tim Chambers and his family. Paul and Jane, Jane Hayes, Bill Wise, and uh, we're also remembering Ted and Ruby and their need for a, a vehicle for their uh, a vehicle handicap ramp uh, for their daughter's use. The missionaries that we're praying for are Richard and Laura Badgett, Pastor Ayota, the Banner of Love Ministry in India, the uh, Ronald Subia in the Philippines, Vincent Wangilia in Uganda, the Johnsons in Brazil, the Hayes in Irma, Daniel Farah, uh, Farrell in missionary discipleship throughout the world, the Jacobs Boots in Bible Ministry, William Sheets at Gideon Indian International, Judy Cummins, the Lost with Clown. And we're remembering the unrest in our world, wars in Israel, wars in the Palestinian area, wars in uh, Ukraine, and all the stuff going on in Haiti, and even in our country, with very serious time. So we want to remember these this morning. Now my uh, nephew, Carl Johnson, is in the Baptist Hospital. That really, he's in intensive care. They don't expect him to live. So we're going to lift up a prayer for the Johnson family. So if you would pray with me right now at this time. Father, we've gone over this list rather hurriedly, but you know every single heart, every name, you know every single need, exactly what to do in each case. But we lift them up to you today in prayer and ask, Father, that you have your divine will and purpose and way in each and every of these situations. We pray again as Ron did for our nations, all the missionaries. We pray for our church here that you bless us as we gather together in this place to worship and glorify you and to fellowship with one another. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would, let's turn again in our hymnal as we uh, sing page 529. This will be the first, second, and the third verse. My country, tis of thee. If you're able to stand, stand with me, and we'll sing these three verses. The first, second, and fourth.
faithfulness in giving. We really uh, need each other, and I'm uh, so honored to have you come and be faithful in giving. You guys come right ahead. Now remember, this evening is our singspiration, and we have Jesse Butcher and his family who will be singing for us. Should be a wonderful, wonderful evening service. And we have on Father's Day, Mercy's Well, that are coming back with us. So we want you to help us promote this. So there are plenty of these flyers in the back if you'd like to take some and post them in the community. That would be really great. Jimmy, will you pray for the offering for us? Gracious, love, and heavenly Father, we come to you once again on this Lord's Day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for giving us the opportunity, the Lord, to come to your house, that we may be faithful to our house, to pray for our church family, and to pray for the pastor, Lord, that you bring the message today. Pray that you'll lead God and direct him. And God, we pray for the people that, that lost their lives, and for the faith of their family. God, we just pray that you watch over us as we've had a rough time. And when some people are working in danger, I know they are, and I pray you do this. Be with us over here, too, that we might stand for Jesus, no matter what. God, we pray that you take this offering, Lord, and, and bless the offering, bless the giver, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.
in your Bibles. Let me sing this song. I'll do this in honor of all of our military families and those who are serving currently and those who have served. And I was thinking about this is that we not only need to say thank you, but we give our salute to all those people who served for this beautiful flag that is the United States of America flag. I hate seeing one desecrated, don't you? Uh, it stands for so much. So I hope this will be a blessing to you. Jesus says here, let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it suffices us, or it will satisfy us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we pray you bless the reading of your word and use it to speak to our hearts in a special way that only your Holy Spirit can do. We always acknowledge him in our presence and know that without his uh, presence in power in our lives, in our lives, we are men most hopeless. So we pray for that today. We pray that you will bless each heart uh, that is attentive today in Christ's name I ask. Amen. So in this chapter, if you noticed on your bulletin, I had given you a golden text. And the golden text says this. Matthew eleven twenty seven, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So in this chapter 14 of John's Gospel, you see the theme of the chapter in very, uh, in first Verse, uh, verse 1 where Jesus is starting this uh, segment off by saying let not your heart be troubled. So what he's doing in this chapter in five different ways he's tenderly comforting the hearts of his disciples. And the comfort that he gave them in that day and at that hour is the same comfort that you and I can share as well. And the heart of the matter is, do we believe in what he says? Do we believe in his teachings? Do we believe and accept his works that he did? If we will reach out and claim his promises by faith, not only can we have eternal life, but we can also have peace and comfort in this world, which is so, so troubled all about. Amen. So he gives us comfort, and he does so by speaking of the place that he had prepared. And today we're going to look at the parent, and that's a reference to his father. And last week we said, oh, what a place, and that's a place is heaven. Today we say, oh, what a parent, and that parent is the father. No one will surpass the Father in his greatness or in the relationship he has with the Son. So he says in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, which is a reference to the Father. If you believe in the Father, believe also in me. So again, we see their hearts are troubled, and he's setting about to comfort those troubled hearts. And I'll tell you folks, throughout the world, everywhere you go, there are people who have troubled hearts. There are people that lack the peace of God. There are people that have trouble sleeping and resting. 
but they could find the comfort and the peace and the rest they so long for if they would just simply believe upon Jesus Christ and accept what he's told us. Look for a moment again at that place that he's prepared because we're going to tie this in together. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And that's where we said, oh, what a place. And he said, if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. So notice he starts that by saying, in my father's house. So make no mistake, he's tying the father to whatever he's saying throughout the gospel, uh, throughout chapter 14 of the gospel of John. And Jesus said in these verses, he said, you know where I'm going. I'm going to my father's house. It doesn't have a good ring to it. Amen. You know, I wish my father were still alive today. And I could say, you know, today after church, I'm going to my father's house. Amen. But I can't do that. But I can go to be with my heavenly father where abides my physical father today. And so one day we're going to be able to do that. So Jesus said, the place I'm going, you know where I'm going to the Father's house. And you know the way to get there. And he goes on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he adds a little uh, part of that. And he said, no man can go there except through me. So we need to understand that. So next we see he's going to reveal a person to us. And this person is his parent. This is God the Father. And I want you to notice, go down and scroll down from verse 5 only, down to verse 11 to see how many times you count the word Father being used. If I am correct, there's at least 10 times Father is used in those few verses and there's also the reference of the father when he uses the pronoun he. So there's 12 times at least the father is mentioned by Jesus Christ. So I would say that he spent this much time dealing with the father that we would simply say, oh, what a parent. Oh, what a father. The father is God. Sounds to me like that Jesus and the Father had a pretty great relationship. Wouldn't you think so? Yes. Sounds to me like Jesus and the Father had such a unique unity, the same heart, the same burden, the same love, the same desire. And it sounds to me like Jesus was a little proud of his dad. Don't you think so? Yes. If we look at it humanly speaking. Now, Father's Day is coming up, dads and moms. My daughter recently bought me a shirt and I think that sometimes I don't ever want to take it off. I've already worn it and had Kathy wash it so it wouldn't be itchy. Uh, so I wore it all day yesterday and I've got it hanging up to wear it again soon. And here's what it says. Fathers are their son's first hero and their daughter's first love. Don't you like that? Yeah. What's sad about it is that there were hundreds of them in Walmart, Mark, for sale. So, but what's good about that, that's the good of the bad. What's good about it is that let's hope they sell out and all children can give their dad a shirt like that and say, you're my first hero and you're my first love. Amen? Amen. That's a great relationship for dads to have with their children. Now, there was one young man that particularly was concerned about pleasing his father. He was a farmer. And one day, he was coming with a load of hay, stacked as high as he could load it, and he was going down the road, and a farmer was watching from the distance, and as the young man turned the corner with the tractor and the trailer load of hay, the whole trailer load fell off. And the young man stopped the tractor, and the farmer saw him out there frantically trying to pick it up, trying to pick it up, and he was just beside himself. So the farmer went over and said, son, 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 slow down. Slow down. Hey, pray. He said, my father wouldn't like it. He said, it's okay. It's just hey. In fact, why don't you come home with me and have dinner? Take a break. He said, my father wouldn't like it. He said, come on, son. Just take a break. And when we come back, I'll help you load that hay. He said, my father won't like it, but I'll go. So he went with the farmer and ate dinner and it was just what he needed. And the farmer said, son, 
You're always concerned about your dad not liking you, eating dinner with me. Why is that? He said, Mr. My father's under the hay. <laughs> so anyway, we want to be pleasing to our earthly fathers. We want to be pleasing to our heavenly father. Notice what Thomas says here. He raises a, some concern with Jesus in verse 5. He said uh, unto the Lord, We know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? So there's a two-part question there. We don't know where you're going. We don't know how you'll get there or how we'll get there. So Jesus is reminding them again that the destination is his father's house and the transportation or the means to get there was through him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look at verse 6. So Jesus makes it clear that he is the abiding source for spiritual life and you'll never go to heaven unless you're born again and receive that life from heaven, that spiritual life. So Jesus is making it clear that if you ever want to get to heaven, you must come by me. And he makes it clear that his father is the end of the way. Isn't that good to know? That where they're going, when you go there, you won't really have to go anywhere else. However, you'll be able to go anywhere you want to but the final destination, the eternal destination for all those who are children of God will be the eternal home. Oh, what a place heaven's going to be because it's going to be in the light of this Father of Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Then Jesus said in verse 7, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth, from this point on, you know him and have seen him. Now notice what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I am a physical manifestation of the Father. Jesus is making it clear that to know Jesus is to know the Father. And over in Hebrews chapter 1, as the writer is writing to present Jesus Christ, he said in Hebrews 1, verse 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, dying on the cross for us, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than angels, as by he hath by inheritance obtained a more than excellent name than they. So here the writer of the Hebrews is saying that Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. That if you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. So he's saying this to Thomas. And then in verse 2, the place that Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. He said, I've already told you. Now, do you see what I'm saying to you? Jesus had just said this to them. And they turned right around to the disciples and said, well, where are you going? And, you know, how are we going to get there? And Jesus said, I've just told you this. He's saying in my Father's house, that's where you're going. You're going to go with me. So then the request is made by Philip in verse 8. Philip said, show us the Father. You see that? See what he's saying here? Now, Philip was one of the earliest disciples of Jesus Christ. But his focus here are the last words Jesus said. And so he turns around and asks Jesus to show him the Father. He asked for a bodily sight of the Father. Now, back in the Old Testament, God would express himself and, and show parts of his glory and his power through the thundering on tops of the mountain, through the pillar of fire, and through earthquakes and all kinds of things. But he also showed him in this little small voice. But no one had ever seen God. John said in John 1, no man has ever seen God. So Philip is saying here, show us the Father. Now, Philip 
I don't know if you remember this about Philip, but he kind of had an eye problem, or maybe he focused a lot on his eyes. In John 1, 46, when he had found Jesus and Jesus found him, he went out and said, come and see. You remember that? Come and see this man. And then uh, and we find in John chapter 6, when the multitude of the crowd was together, uh, Philip looked out over the crowd and saw how, large, saw how large the crowd was and couldn't figure out how Christ would ever feed them. John 6, 7. And then in John 12, 21, when the Greeks were seeking Jesus, they came to Philip and said, we want to see Jesus. So you see, Philip's eyes, uh, he had to see something. You know, there's uh, Missouri is called the state of the Shoahs, Shoah state. And they say that because the Missourians uh, use a lot of common sense and it's like they say, if you show us, we will believe. And we we'll use our common sense. All you have to do is put two and two together. Have you ever known someone that really, uh, they're very smart, but when they went outside, they don't have enough sense if it's random to take an umbrella? <coughs> well, we don't, we have people in our society that have very little common sense. Jesus says here in verse 7, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. That's common sense, is it not? Hey, listen, a pastor and his church, much like we, were in their fellowship hall one Saturday afternoon celebrating the new roof that the carpenters had just put on the building. They were so excited, the pastor was sitting down and they were just praising God, everyone was just fine. All of a sudden, a horrific thunderstorm came in. I mean, it was... It was thundering and lightning and pouring down the rain, and suddenly the roof started dripping right on the pastor's bald head. And he, he looked up and said, what's going on here? He got so upset, he grabbed his phone, he pulled his phone out, and he called the contractor. He said, listen to this. This is Pastor So-and-so. I want you to know that I'm here with all my friends and our church family, and we're celebrating this new roof that you put in. And let me tell you something. It's dripping water. We're in a thunderstorm and it's dripping water right over the top of my head. What are you going to do about that? <clears throat> and the contract said, well, Pastor, if I were you, I'd do my chair. That's common sense, isn't it? So Philip says, we want to see the Father. And Jesus said, we have already shown you the Father. Look at verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. So how sayest thou, show us the Father? So Philip, again, even though he had had the proof before his eyes, he had witnessed the miracles, he still was saying to him, show us the Father. Now let me ask you, is there not a hint of sadness in that verse, show us the Father. Have I been so long with you and you don't even recognize me? You don't recognize that I'm showing you the Father? You know, one of the saddest things is when a husband or a wife or a child or a parent has, has someone related to them that develops some sort of disease that takes the memory away. And here they're sitting in their presence and they're saying, I'm your daughter or I'm your husband or I'm your wife or I'm your pastor and, and you don't know me. Isn't that sad? Yeah. That's very sad. We can't do anything about that, at least right now. That's one of those things about this human flesh is prone to get sick and develop all kinds of problems. And that's just one of them. But spiritually speaking, for Jesus to have to say to his close disciple, one of his oldest disciples, have I not been so long with you, Tom, uh, Philip, and you still don't know me? That's a sad, sad thought. And they should have known him. And I think what Philip might have been saying is we want to see the Father. And so Jesus is coming back and he stresses this 
in verse 10, he says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Herein lies the problem. It isn't that Jesus has not revealed the Father to them or to people today, but that those who have seen Jesus and studied of Jesus refuse to believe upon Jesus. That's the problem. They lack faith. They lack faith. So Jesus is saying, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I and the Father, we're one. So Jesus said, Philip, Thomas, look at me. Look at me. When you see me, you see the Father. When you see me, you'll see the Father's love. When you see me, you'll see the Father's mercy. When you see me, you'll see the Father's grace. When you see me, you'll see the Father's goodness. When you see me, you'll see the Father's tenderness. When you see me, you'll see the Father's faithfulness. When you see me, you'll see the Father's power. Jesus is saying, I am the physical manifestation of the Father. He that hath seen me has seen the Father. Now Jesus gives two more proofs. Look at verse 10 and 11, the next part of that. He says, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. So Jesus is saying, the words that I've spoken to you have revealed the Father. Everything Jesus set out to do and all that he accomplished was to be in obedience to his Father. <coughs> he didn't say anything that would have disagreed with anything the Father would have wanted him to say. So he said the very words, words that I share to you today, they're the words of the Father. Do you believe that? And then he says here, <coughs> if you don't believe my words, what about the works? Do my works acknowledge to you that they are of the Father? And the Bible again says Jesus did only those things that pleased his heavenly Father. The works that I do speaks of the Father, that he dwells in me and I dwell in the Father. So the very works and the words are revelation to you enough of the Father. If you really want to see a manifestation of the heavenly Father, you have seen him in me. He is in me, and I am in him. So I want you to notice one other thing. Scroll over those verses again, and look at how many times the word believe or believeth is used. And you'll see that it's not just the emphasis here on the Father, but it's also the emphasis is upon believing the word of Jesus Christ. So he has revealed the Father to them, and we can only say, oh, what a parent the Father is. Not only has the Father been mentioned numerous times, but the word believe has. So Jesus is issuing them a challenge that he issues to you and me today, to everyone who would hear his words or see his works. Do you believe? Do you believe? Believe. That's at the heart, and that's the whole thrust of the matter. Do you truly believe? You know, if we really believe, we would have this peace, right? Yes. If we really believe, we would have this comfort because he's right there with us. A little girl uh, had some sort of problem, so she went to the doctor. Her dad took her to the doctor, a little four-year-old girl. And the doctor told her he's going to have to give her a shot to help her overcome this sickness. 
So when she really learned finally what the doctor was going to do, her face showed a face full of anxiety and fear, and her body tensed up. And as the doctor went over and picked up a needle and headed her way, in her mind she's thinking that needle is big enough to kill an elephant. So she turned her eyes at that moment and looked at her father and fixed her eyes upon her father's eyes. And he said, it's okay, sweetheart. I'm right here. At that, her body released the tension. She received the shock, calmness took over her because she found out that she wasn't alone at all. She had the comfort of the presence of her father with her. And that's what Jesus is saying to all of us. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm right here. I'm right here. Would you believe? Let's stand, have our heads bowed, eyes are closed. I'm not sure how God has spoken to your heart. Ron, if you would play something softly for us. But today, if you have a need of comfort, you have a need of assurance of God's presence, today is that day. Do not delay, do not put this off. Father, as we search our hearts today, we think of this powerful portion of your holy word that you've given to us. We can only pray, Father, that we have accepted it, we do believe it, because we do trust not only the inspired Word of God, but we trust the words and the works of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a parent, oh, what a father we have in our Heavenly Father. And He is ours and we are His because we have accepted His Son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for our salvation.